Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where it's all about using the power of your mind to create hope, health, and miracles on your fertility journey. And now your host, a dash of science and a heap of spirit, Dr. Maria Rothenberger. Well, hello there. It is Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host for the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. Welcome to episode 144, The Wisdom of Taking a Break. I have just come off a retreat, a personal retreat in our trailer up at a campsite in Oregon here where it's actually sunshiny today. What? It snowed this morning and now it's sunshiny. (laughs) global warming? I don't know. Anyway, uh, welcome to today's episode. We're going to be talking about the wisdom of taking a break. And it's on the forefront of my mind because I just took a long break, a nice long break. And here I am feeling a little more refreshed. So first, checking in with you around the happenings and goings on at the Miracles Happen Fertility Center. If you are not on my email list, go get on my email list. What are you waiting for? There's so much good stuff on there, including monthly updates and heads up when there are sales and things like that. And um, you can unsubscribe at any time. I do not spam you. I am not a spammy person. Um, You will also get, if you want a monthly Oracle reading on if you're on my newsletter, that comes for free. That was one of the more popular things on my um, membership that I had that I had to unfortunately close down because I needed to be more simplified this year. That is my word for the year, simplify. And that takes me into this break that I took, but we'll get there in a second. The other thing that I just wanted to mention really quick is that Spirit Baby Foundations training is happening again in April of 2022. So that's another reason to get on my mailing list if you are interested in that. Or you can go to drmariarothenberger.com slash spirit baby training and sign up for more information there. I'll have it for you when I have more dates and all those specifics. So, um... Let's talk about taking a break, okay? This has come up a few times of late and I feel it's important to talk about it. I know that I've talked about it on my podcast before, but I wanna talk about it more specifically. I'm gonna break it down for you from a mind, body, spirit perspective. All three sides, why it's important. And I'll even throw in a little bit of Spirit Baby there because it keeps coming up in Spirit Baby sessions. And so when things keep coming up, I know that it's now time for me to talk about it on my podcast. So that's why I'm talking about this. Okay, so first of all, I um, I think I mentioned this actually on my last podcast episode that I booked a campsite for myself for a few days um, to take our trailer up to. And I just disconnected. I took time for me and uh, I just (laughs) enjoyed it so much. Um, I remember the first time that I took a retreat during the fertility debacle, the darkness, those dark days. And... (laughs) funny story. Um, One of my favorite places in the world is the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, New York. And I was there just on a weekend retreat. And they have all kinds of things there, by the way. If you haven't been there, post COVID, I'm sure they are so delighted to have people there again. Um, And I can't wait to get back there. Even though I live on the completely opposite coast now, I will make my way back to the Omega Institute at some point. Uh, They have all vegetarian, vegan fare. They have rustic accommodation. So it's like you can bring your own tent and camp there or they have little cabins and things. So it is not like a five-star hotel or something. It's like a camp kind of vibe if that is your thing. And it is totally mine. And they have different classes, various classes related to mind, body, soul, wellness. Um, 
and trainings for professionals and things like that. So anyway, the first time that I was there was during the darkness of infertility. And I was taking this break serious. I hadn't taken a break for myself in eons. And I was, my body and my mind were ravaged. I mean, they were just, from all the fertility treatments and the depression and, whew, I was, if you've read Transcending Infertility, you know I was in a really dark place, really dark place. Um, so I went there to the Omega Institute and I booked a massage because that's what you do, right? It had been so long since I self-cared. I mean, like even getting a freaking manicure. I, I just didn't do that shit. I couldn't spend the money. I had to spend $8,000 billion on IVF treatments. I couldn't get a manicure. So I booked a massage and I said, I just have to do this for myself. And I went and it was the best massage ever. And after the massage, <laughs> I felt like intoxicated. Like I felt drunk. I feel like maybe she had released all of these toxins in my body and now they were like floating around and I was walking around feeling like intoxicated. And you know what happens when you're like, a little bit intoxicated, like buzzing a little bit and like you're just happy and everybody is like lovely and stuff unless you're an angry, um, intoxicated person. Then that's not that. I was in this just love state and I went up to the massage therapist, you know, she gives you or they give you um, a cup of water to drink and stuff. And so I was drinking the water and I walked up to her in the hallway and I was like, oh my God. That was the best massage I've had in my whole life. And I gave her a hug. <laughs> she was like, that's great. You know, like she patted me on the back and stuff. <laughs> like it was just this awkward moment. Oh, it was awful. But it really was the best massage I had ever had in my life because I was so torn up mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, every which way that you can be broken, that was me. And so to be taken care of just for one hour, oh, it was brilliant. And I felt drunk happy and I decided to tell the massage therapist that and give her a hug. So I was awkward as normal, by the way, if you ever meet me in person, I, I, I tend to be a little socially awkward. I'm just awkward like that, right? Welcome to the world of an introvert. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> the importance of a break. Let's talk about it first from a mental health perspective. Okay, so you know me, if you've listened to this podcast before, I am grounded in, in science-y, very, you know, earthbound stuff, and I love these also esoteric topics. So let's start with the super grounded stuff, okay? Mind, body. Okay, let's talk about from a mental health perspective. Mental health, when you're dealing with fertility, needless to say, sucks. We are so torn up on various levels. Everything is affected. Our personal relationship with ourself even is affected. Our relationship with our partner, if we have one, with coworkers, just with our job in general with being a person who is supposed to, quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes here, um, create a family and can't do this thing that's so natural and easy, right? And we can't. So our, our mental health takes a huge hit. And when you continue, I'm probably preaching to the choir right now, when you continue at that state of unwell mentally, when you continue in that state, there's like no coming up for air. It's like breathing through one of those little Capri Sun straws in a pool. <laughs> it is so difficult. And you know what? The straw gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until it too is submerged in that pool. 
So when you have a mental health struggle, especially when dealing with fertility issues, the majority of folks that I have talked to in the fertility world are not used to that. They're, they're high functioning, conscientious people, and they're not generally used to a history of such devastating mental health issues. If you do have a history of mental health struggles, weirdly, you are like better prepared for this, right? I guess that's not that weird. You're better prepared to handle the struggles of mental health and fertility. But if you don't take care of it, you will be submerged underwater with that little Capri Sun straw and you won't know what to do. You have to come up for air. And what does that mean? What we're talking about today is a break. It means a break. And I don't just mean like a break from treatments. I mean a break from thinking about this shit. I mean a break from talking about it. I mean a break from planning. I I mean all of it. I mean go freaking hog wild. Take a vacation. I don't know. Drink if that's your thing. Uh, If you're depressed, by the way, alcohol makes you more depressed. But that's that. Um, If you want to go and like play a bunch of like D and D with your friends. That's Dungeons and Dragons for those who are not nerdy. Do it for like a month straight. I don't know. However long it takes to finally feel like you're yourself again. You have to take a break in order to at least poke that straw up out of the surface of the water again, but ideally to to emerge out of the water, at least your head, right? Because infertility is a big freaking deal. Making a baby, creating a family is a big freaking deal, but it isn't all of who you are. It isn't everything. So it's important to put it back in its rightful place so that you can alleviate some of that depression so that you can calm some of the anxiety Now, this leads right back into, oh, by the way, I should say, chronic mental health struggles, if you don't take care of them, they they tend to decline, things tend to get worse. So, you know, you might think, oh, it's just, you know, a little depression, I can handle it for a little while, I can like power through it, you know, that's sort of like the Western culture vibe, right? Just suck it up, right? Suck it up, just deal with it. P.S. Not to be a feminist, but I'm going to be a feminist right now, especially women. Women are not, quote, allowed to have tender emotions or be emotional at all. We have to suck it up even more. So there's that. All right. If you feel like you have to suck it up and carry on, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's time to take a break. And what happens after a large break, like a long, long month or three month break, then you can start taking micro breaks and alleviate pressure even more like a soda bottle that's been shooken up really hard. You just open the cap a tiny bit and it lets out some of that pressure so that you're not just hanging out underwater forever. So take care of this now. It does not, it's probably not going to stay how it is. It might get worse. It'll probably get worse. I should correct myself. It'll probably get worse if you do not take care of this now. Okay, so this leads to me, in my work, right into the body. Okay, and again, if you've read Transcending Infertility, you'll know this is what I talk about a lot. Mental health, emotional health affects the body. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a um, physiatrist. I'm not a physician. I'm not a doctor, medical doctor. But all of the research shows and points to how our mental and emotional wellness affect our phys the heck is that sound (laughs) our physical bodies i think that was just like my heat that just came on if you hear that whirring in the background sorry about that anyway so this is a la dr bruce lipton the biology of belief uh dr joe dispenza you are the placebo lots of researchers have looked at this topic so When you are so devastated mentally and emotionally, your body has a response. 
And usually the response is a shutting down of the reproductive system. Because I give this example in my book of a gazelle being chased by a lion. Now, I've probably talked about this on the podcast a lot of times too, so forgive me if this is um, a duplication. (laughs) But when you are being chased by, when a gazelle is being chased by a lion, they run, right, for their life. They run for their life. Now, the lion tires out, the gazelle is like, okay, the lion went back home, and then the gazelle goes back to grazing as if everything's all fine and well. The difference between humans and the gazelle is that we continue to think, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, that lion crests over the hill again? What if, what if, what if? And so we're constantly in preparing to run mode or fight, or we're in freeze, right? Fight, flight, or freeze. That is lizard brain trying to keep us safe. And what happens when you are activated like that when the sympathetic nervous system is activated like that, it shuts down non-essential or not completely shuts down, but it hinders non-essential functions in the body. So digestion gets weak. Uh, You might experience um, constipation or nausea or pains in the stomach, things like that. It shuts down reproduction because no gazelle is reproducing in the middle of being chased by a lion, right? Neither is a human. Reproduction is not necessary when we are being chased by a lion effectively in our brains when we're constantly worried about the threat so that is how this mental and emotional unwellness affects your body it it's almost like a constriction it's exactly like a constriction from an energetic standpoint and this is where i'll be pulling in the spiritual piece because Um, I see this a lot when I look at folks' energy systems, their chakra systems, and I talk to Spirit Baby. There's this feeling of just total constriction. I want you to think about that for a second. How many times have you gotten on Dr. Google, (laughs) you've consulted with Dr. Google about a diet, things that you should eat if you're trying to conceive, exercises that you should slash should not do, if you're trying to conceive? What are the supplements that you should take if you're trying to conceive? What are all the things that you can't consume or do when you're trying to conceive? That is pigeonholing you into this tiny little spot of like supposed perfection for conceiving. That is the energy of constriction. Can't, 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 can't. And so I see that a lot. Let's just talk about the energy thing. Let's talk about the spirit thing. I see that a lot in folks' energy systems. I feel the 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 constriction in their energy body. Now, energy moves a lot faster than, than material does. So I will sometimes see it in their energy field before it's even manifest in their body. But soon enough, it will manifest in the body. If you are having physical symptoms already, it is in your energy field. You can begin by changing your energy field and that will affect your body slowly over time because material takes, matter takes longer than energy to change. Or you can start at the level of the body by taking different supplements and things like that. But if you think about that, taking different supplements, um, having certain foods, doing certain exercises, um, they do affect the body, but they start in your mind mental mental thinking capacity they start in your emotions and that therefore they start in your energy system so the difference is and here's the key <laughs> well one key um, I talk about nine keys in my book but the the key here in this podcast episode is that you are paying attention to what is right for you rather than what the multitudes of people are telling you you have to do on the internet or what they did. So now you feel like you had to do that. Well, they did, you know, um, vaginal cleanses and they stood upside down on their head and they traveled to such and such country to pray to the divinity, to the fertility God. And, you know, and they got pregnant with twins. So yay, I need to do that. By the way, twins is a very, um, risky wish. (laughs) So just putting that out there. Um, you don't have to do all that shit. 
you get to pay attention to what feels right to you and truly feels right to you, not from a desperate place, right? It's not meant to satiate your desperation. It's, it's meant to propel you towards your goal, your ultimate goal. There's a difference there. And when I talk about accessing your intuition, there is a podcast episode about accessing your intuition. Just search for that. Um, you'll be able to tell the difference where, how am I coming from a place of desperation rather than a place of my actual intuition? Here's a hint. Intuition has no emotion at all. There's no positive affect. There's no negative affect. It's just fact. It just feels like fact. That's it. So when you tune into what your own body and your mental wellness needs, your slash your intuition, when you tune in your, to your intuition, you will know already, um, actually two cups of coffee a day. That's, that feels fine to me. If it feels good. Awesome. If it feels neutral. Awesome. If it feels bad. Awesome. Now you have your information. Now, you know, oh, I can't have, or I'm not going to have two cups of coffee because it doesn't feel right. And then you know what happens energetically? The restriction goes away because you're doing what feels right to you. It doesn't feel like restriction. It feels like, oh, I just don't want that. I think I gave an example recently of my, I have um, two boys and a husband. I live with all boys except for the cat who's a female and doesn't like me. How messed up is that? (laughs) That suck. Anyway, so they all, for whatever reason, love sweets. They're all sweet tooths. I am not a sweet tooth. I just don't have a sweet tooth. I love savory things. So my son, after Halloween or whatever holiday it was, had a bunch of candy and they were like going through all and they were all excited like, ooh, you know, hundred grand and Snickers, this and this and that. And I like it. I like some of that sometimes, but I'm just not like, ooh. And my son offered me chocolate and I went like, no, no, thank you. I'm great. And, and it was like, what? <laughs> Like he couldn't even understand that I was so like, no, I'm, I'm good. I could feel it. Like I could just feel like I don't need that right now. Now there are times that I'm like, oh yes, chocolate. Yes. Or I like sour things sometimes. So like sour patch kids. Yes. That, that feels good to me right now. That feels great. It's like an instant knowing there's no, um, positive judgment, negative judgment. There's nothing. It's just instant. I just know my body needs that right now. I'll do the same with food. What do I want for breakfast? Do I want, you know, A or do I want B? Oh, A. Yep. A feels better. Sometimes it's equal. And so then, yay, options are open. (laughs) But do you see how this is like the, the spectrum of tuning into your energy, using your intuition, and that affects your mind and your body? ultimately. So let's talk about how this comes up in spirit baby sessions. Most of the time, spirit babies don't need anything from you. They're perfectly happy and waiting or um, moving things around on the other side, getting ready, whatever it is that they're doing. They don't need a whole lot from you. Some babies do. Some babies have requests or they need a shift or they need a question answered or they need to make an apology for whatever reason. They do have, some babies do have that. Uh, But for the most part, babies aren't going to say, yeah, I really need you to take that one supplement. I really need you to take CoQ10. (laughs) They're not, they're not going to say that for the most part. What they will say or or communicate to me, and they probably are communicating it to you too, you're just not listening to it, is they want you to be loving toward yourself. They want you to feel in alignment with your highest good. They want you to feel peaceful. They want you to feel playful. And they'll often reference times when that existed, right? So like um, the last few sessions that I've had, um, babies have, have referenced when their parents have been more playful, like they used to do art or they used to dance or they used to sing, or they used to, you know, jump on a trampoline. It doesn't matter what it is. 
but they feel there's that energy of like playfulness and just being alive, being happy at being alive. That's what babies communicate. They don't, they don't talk about, you know, a particular supplement or diet or, um, removing something from your diet. They don't talk about that at all. They just talk about your loving yourself and being love and being joy. So when babies reference this restricted feeling, it's usually because it, it's not meant to say or meant to convey, I can't come in because you're restricted. It's not that. It's usually, oh gosh, I really, it's so awful to see you this way. I want for, I want peace for you. I want for you to feel happy and joyful again and, um, and peace and loving yourself. And P.S., that energy, that vibe is the absolute best way to perceive spirit baby messages for yourself. It's just like tuning into a radio station. You turn the dial to peacefulness and joy and self-love and love for others and compassion and self-compassion. That is the space, that is the radio station where spirit babies reside. So they want that for you and they want that because they can communicate with you better there. You're tuned into them. Otherwise they are trying. They do, they send all kinds of messages even though you're not tuning into them. They, they will never stop trying. They're, some babies try to be really obvious. Other babies are like, eh, it's fine. I'm here and I know the truth. You know, it's cool. And other babies are like, no, I'm going to recently, um, I was like, why? I said to a client, why is baby showing me a bird hitting a window? <laughs> and I was actually really distressed by that because I have a memory of a bird hitting a window and then actually died. So I was like, why is baby showing me that? And she's like, oh my God, a bird hit my, hit the back window of my car. And we had previously talked about baby showing up as a bird. Um, so anyway, babies will be that obvious, you know, they'll, they'll show animals or things that don't, they're not behaving right, quite right. Um, and so that's usually a clue. So when you take a break back to that topic, babies are like, ah, oh my gosh. And I do mean again, a true break, a break from the harriedness, the planning, the, um, the intensity, the worry, the self-doubt, the doubt in general, the fear, all of it, being able to remove yourself from that, or at least acknowledge when that's happening and give yourself some self-love, take care of yourself during that and acknowledge that as your brain simply trying to protect you from future trauma, because we all know the infertility world is very traumatic. And then give yourself a fucking break. Go do something. Go be somewhere. Go hang out with someone that helps you feel alive and joyful and peaceful and playful again. You don't even have to be with somebody. You can do like what I did. Get in a trailer and go camping for a weekend. I am an introvert um, by nature. It's probably why I'm awkward and nerdy. Um... And I love the solace. I, I once heard a quote, um, you will never feel lonely if you like who you're hanging out with. And that's true. I just like hanging out with myself. Boy, I brought board, board games and books and I wrote my, on my, in my novel and watched movies and had some wine and it was great. It was, I made some Buddha bowls. <laughs> it was delicious and awesome and fun. I had a great time. And when you do that, you, that is like the ultimate self-compassion. It is such a beautiful energy to be with. Now, if you do take a break and you notice your, yourself feeling squirmy and like antsy, that means that there's some stuff in there that needs to come to the surface. That means there's darkness or worry or pain, just pain that needs to surface. So I highly recommend taking a break and doing a ton of self-care while you're taking a break. 
So that means journaling, that means having hot baths, that means going on hikes or walks or bike rides, being in nature, really taking care of yourself because it needs to come out in order for your spirit and your soul and your body and your mind to detox. That's what that is. Oftentimes folks keep busy so that they can avoid the pain that's residing there. And you know what pain says? Pain says, all right, I'll wait. And as soon as you're still, pain shows up. So be forewarned. I highly, highly recommend that you take a break. If you're feeling completely overwhelmed and in a dark place, take a freaking break. And then expect some darkness to show up. So you might be going, hey, Maria, WTF, you told me to take a break. I thought I was going to be chill. Instead, I like cried the whole time. Yes, yes, please do. <laughs> Let that shit go. It has to come out. It has to feel everything, be messy. I don't care if you're like in a ball, in a fetal position, like crying for an entire weekend of a break or an entire 90 days of a break. Okay, not 90 days. No, not 90 days. If it's more than three weeks, okay, then maybe we should have a conversation. That might be major depression. And that's a different conversation. Also, if you're having suicidal ideation, especially if you are planning or having intent around harming yourself, uh, 911 immediately or the National Suicide Hotline, or you can text 741741 to talk to someone immediately. Uh, that is a different thing. That is not taking a break. That is uh, deep, deep pain and uh, needs professional help. And it's completely okay. We That's what we are here for. We mental health professionals, we're like, yay, another person we can help. So please take advantage of that. You are um, valuable and important and those resources are there for you. So if you are crying for an entire weekend, if you are crying during your break off and on, if you feel like that cloudy, fuzzy brain, foggy brain thing, that is your mind, body, spirit, soul detoxing and it needs it. Please allow it to happen. Please. Okay. That is the wisdom of taking a break. On the other side of taking a break, you may feel exhausted. You may feel energetic. Both are equally correct. <laughs> Both are equally possible. Both are equally fine. What the most important thing is, is that you can move forward now with more clarity, more ease, hopefully more gentleness and compassion toward yourself. And that always moves forward in your relationships and in your experiences with other people, your movement through the fertility treatment process, if you're doing that, your connection with spirit baby, it improves everything. It just improves everything. So go be wise, choose to take a break if you know that you need it. And the one question I know that comes up a lot is, yeah, but I'm such and such age, so I don't have a lot of time. I'm feeling the pressure. I have to be pregnant like now. Well, guess what? When you don't honor the fact that you need to take a break, you push that away from you. You push it away even more. So honor yourself, take a break invite the universe to align with your wishes through peacefulness and self-compassion. The universe is listening, my friend. Okay. Until next time, take a break, be wise, and be well.